Welcome back to the channel. This is part 10 in our series of Flask to AWS. In this video, we're going to set up the CI, CD, Continuous Integration, Continuous Deployment Pipeline with GitHub Actions. This is going to allow us to make changes to the files locally, push those changes to GitHub, and automatically fire off a CI, CD pipeline that pushes those changes to AWS and deploys them on our web app with zero downtime. This video has a lot of prerequisites in terms of setup, and I recommend you watch the whole video series up until this point to so make sure you have all the setup necessary done. If you don't do that, you're going to be missing pieces, and it may be hard to follow along with this video. So before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Sponsor me on either GitHub Sponsors or on Patreon. Subscribing to the YouTube channel, liking this video, and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, starring the repo, and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do, if you haven't already, is clone the repo. Copy it here, open up your terminal, git, clone, and paste. So you have the repo cloned to your local machine. Now open it up in a code editor. The file we're gonna be looking at first is in the doc GitHub workflows folder called aws.yaml. What this file is, is the CD, continuous deployment file, for AWS, we're going to run to automatically deploy our code changes to AWS with GitHub Actions. So we scroll down, we're running it on release, types created, and we have this workflow dispatch. What this workflow dispatch allows us to do is to run this workflow manually if we want to, which is what we're gonna do in this video series. We just name it right here. We're running on base image Ubuntu latest. It's, you can think of this similar to a Docker image. You have to have a base image to run the action. We're specifying a few environment variables up here. The default region, the repository name, the service name, and the cluster name. If any of these are different for you, you should change these now up here. They're going to be referenced throughout the file below. We check out the code right here. We can figure our AWS credentials. We need to specify the access key ID and the secret access key. And we're using the default region from the environment up here. We already got these two variables right here, access key and secret access key from a previous video for IAM where we set up the user. We store these credentials. If you have not done this yet, you need to create a user on IAM and store these credentials. We also store them as secrets in GitHub. So if we go back, I'm going to reference my private repo where I have my all my configurations stored. We go to settings, we scroll down, we go to secrets, actions. We're referencing our access key ID and secret access key right here in our action secrets, which we reference in our workflow file. If you haven't set these yet, you can copy them from the workflow file. I'll do for this first one. Go to new repository secret, paste the secret name, and then paste the value you got from AWS. So back to the workflow file. That's where we're referencing these two values. Going down, we log into ECR, and then we build and tag and push the image to ECR. Where ECR, remember, is the last container repository that stores our Docker image. So we log in. And then we run our Docker build command, passing in a few build arguments for the access key ID, the secret access key, and the default region. Then we push that image to ECR. Once we push that image to ECR, we update the task definition, referencing this AWS tap definition.json. Where do we get this though? Well, we have the file right here. It's in the top level directory. We actually need to copy this from AWS. So let's go to the management console, open up the browser, management console, we're going to go to Elastic Container Service. Go to Task Definitions. Task Definition. Your most recent version, JSON. And then just copy all of this JSON right here. Go back and then just replace everything here. There's no point to walk through this because we're just copying and pasting straight from AWS. So I'm not going to do that here. Back to the YAML file, that's what we're referencing right here, is this AWS tap definition.json. These file names must be the same in terms of referencing. Repository name, again, we're referencing at the top of this file in the env, right up here. If any of these variables are different for you on your AWS setup, you need to change them up here. And then we deploy that to ECS task definition, which updates our web application, passing in the service name and the cluster name, again, from env, which is above. So before we run the CI CD pipeline, let's make a change to app.py so we can see the changes in action. 
When we return hello world, we're just going to add how are you at the end so we can see a change. So after you save this file, you save the task definition file, and you also save the YAML file if necessary, if you made any changes up here. Then you can go to your terminal and do git add star, git commit your changes, and then do git push. After you do that, you can open up the repo, which will be right here. Go to the actions tab, pull it down on ECS, and run the workflow. I have all my configurations in my private repo, so I'm going to go there. I go to Actions, deploy to Amazon ECS, and run Workflow. Go ahead and refresh the screen. You see it running. Click into it. And then you see it running. Okay, it just finished running. Now let's actually open up the web browser and see it in action. AWS ECS demo dot programming with Alex dot com. And we see our changes. Hello world, how are you? So like I showed before in the ECS series with the diagrams, what's happening is we have our initial code running on a task instance. What happens when we push the code is we start a new task instance. And when the, both the task instances are running at the same time, the old one is live, the new one is spinning up. So you're at that 200% threshold. Once the new task is fully finished switching up, all traffic is redirected to the new task instance with the code. And the old task instance becomes deregistered. That's what's happening with the CI CD pipeline on AWS. In the next video, we're going to connect our Flask application to an AWS Relational Database Service, RDS. This will allow us to store and access records all on an AWS database separate from our EC2 instance and application. So we have separation of components on AWS. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.